Hey guys, and welcome to my recap of Z Nation Season 2, Episode 2, White Light. This is how you television. This is how you do that. You... Holy crap, this episode. Holy crap. Okay, so... Everything starts off exactly where we left it, basically. Uh, things are kicking off in wherever it is that they're supposed to be. I'm forgetting the exact ze- blah, the geographical. Yeah, that works. Geographical location. Uh, but everybody's chasing Murphy. Citizen Z's up at the North Pole. He's getting chased by zombies. And the whole episode is that. I mean, th- there's stuff that happens in the episode. But, I mean, just to start off with... My mind is a little bit blown with how much action was in this. I mean, we we all know Z Nation, right? It's sort of the low budget, you know, kind of poorer imitation of The Walking Dead. Not poor, poorer in the monetary sense. I absolutely like this show better than The Walking Dead. But they don't have the budget as much. And so you're not expecting to see something like this, this grand spectacle of this chaos of people chasing each other all over town and gunfights and rockets going off. And I mean, just nonstop. It literally did not stop through the whole episode. I, 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 I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'll I'll talk about the big stuff when I get to the big stuff. Uh, starting off, um, we have all of our, we have several different coalitions, let's say of bounty hunters, or mercenaries, or whatever you want to call them, that are after Murphy now. Which I love... Z Nation takes itself very... Like, the plot it takes very seriously. So it doesn't... Like, when Citizen Z puts out that... Whatever you want to call it, the the bounty on Murphy. Like, that is going to have consequences for the whole rest of the season. And you can see you can see as he's doing it that he thinks, like, Okay, well, I'm trying to help. But Murphy needs to get there. But... Putting that bounty out, telling everybody what Murphy was, that has suddenly changed the game. Now everybody's looking for Murphy, they know he's val- valuable, and they are willing to do whatever it takes to get him, to get that cure, to get that reward. Uh, they don't care about him, they don't care about the other people, and it is, it's is—it's this giant firefight that kicks off. Uh, some Mexican dude with a rocket launcher just pops up. We don't know... Much about him, we see him in his SUV with a bunch of guys with the masks. The new mercenary guy, who we still haven't learned his name, we met him at the end of the last episode, and he's kind of a through line for this episode a little bit, where he keeps popping up, he's still chasing Murphy, but as we get further into this episode, we kind of get a turn to where we're seeing, like, okay, this guy isn't... We don't know what kind of a guy he is, but we're not seeing him as a villain at this point. Um... He sees them and just instantly starts taking them out. Uh, so he takes out all of the guys who ha- were wearing the masks. And the one guy he doesn't take out uh, is the older Mexican gentleman. And he gets out with the rocket launcher. And that's how you kick off the episode. Blowing up a whole car with the rocket launcher. And things just get crazy from there. Um, to go further with the rocket launcher thing. Uh, he shoots it off another time. And one of the most fascinating things to me in this episode was how they showed the fallout of that with 10K's deafness, right? Because you see that, you know, that big explosion, it hits, it does the thing where he doesn't actually, you know, get perforated or his lungs don't collapse or anything because we don't want that much realism. We want 10K to live, please. Enough character deaths in this episode. But he gets blown free of, you know, of the debris and he can't hear. Uh, It's not permanent for the whole episode, but for like a solid 20 to 30 minutes, 10K is not, he's like, he's yelling, like, I can't hear, I can't hear you, what are you talking about? Fascinating fallout, and it really adds an interesting dynamic to this already intense action scene, because he's their, you know, he's their weapon of choice, you know, 10K is the guy who you can count on to come and take some people out to snipe your guys out. And if he can't hear, if he can't hear where the gunfire is coming from or where the zombies are coming from, he's super vulnerable in this particular situation. So him and Doc have to split off. They have great, 
great moments together. Ten K and Doc is a really interesting pairing, not in the weird shipping sense. Uh, guys, you guys go away. I don't want to hear about that. But like the father son dynamic, because Ten K has lost his dad. We know that from season one. And then Doc has lost his. I, we assume he's lost some kids. He's an older gentleman. Seems like he probably would have gotten around in his day. And so there's probably some little docs that are now zombies running around. Um, So these guys kind of have this, you know, sort of surrogate father-son relationship. And they have reinforced that so well with this scene because they work together really well. You see how they, they care, care about each other. They work together. Doc, it's super smart, too. Like, it's not like one of those things where I, I hate when people are idiots in the zombie. I know I know people are actually idiots in real life, but allow, allow me my fantasy that some people are actually smart. And Doc, on the fly, is able to be like, all right. 10K is out of commission. He can't hear. Uh, you know, so he's like, he just switches over to the hand signals. Like, all right, three, two, one, we're going. And and it all works. And him and 10, 10K make this great team where Doc is the ears and 10K is the guy who can kill people with a sniper rifle. Uh, but <laughs> it's just, it's a really, uh, you know, it's a, it's a really great, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, the scene, speaking of smart people doing smart things, Murphy with the decoy, although it didn't really add a lot to the plot. You, you saw him thinking, trying to get out of the situation. You saw way, different ways that he can use his zombie minions. And also more, this, mo- this episode, as intense as it was, had a few great moments of comedy. And that was, for me, that was one of them. When he is running around and the zombies are all like running after him. And then like he stops and they're like, they stop behind him. They're like, whoa, he stopped. He stopped you guys. I think we should stop. And he's like, and he's so upset. Like he gets into the room and he's like, guys, give me some space. I need to think, let me alone. And so he, <laughs> I don't know that, that in particular struck me as very funny. There was a couple of doc moments in this episode. Uh, in particular, him and 10 K in the process of 10 K dealing with his deafness, doc gets a little bit separated from 10 K. Uh, 10 K is like, you know, sees where the, the they're being held pinned down by a sniper, which is also really interesting. You know, because 10K is the sniper, it's neat to have that sort of reversed and say, okay, well, what happens if somebody else is a sniper and they're shooting at 10K? Oh my gosh, 10K can't hear. Now Doc's way off there because he had to run away from the sniper. Uh, 10K gets in the information about where the sniper is. Doc busts into the room and they get into a big, you know, brawl, a fight. And first of all, Doc can hold his own. That the moment when he busts into the room, that was that was hilarious too. He busts into the room, he's got his gun, he's like, you know, he's psyched himself up. He says, like, "Now is the time for all good men to come to the end of their country." You know, doing like Doc does. He busts into the door, click, 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 click. The gun has has jammed. The guy like turns around and Doc just flings the gun at him because that's all he can think of to do, and bum rushes him, and they end up in this fight where. Doc has a broken bottle. The other guy has a knife. They're slugging it out, trying to stab each other, trying to cut each other. I think they eventually lose their weapons. And Doc starts getting choked out. And you're thinking like, okay, the 10K thing, we didn't really think he was, you know, it's like, okay, he he got blown free. We know how the movies work. We know how TV works. He's probably going to be okay. It's 10K. He can't just get blown up, you know, in five seconds. That would not be okay. But here, this has been a, a like a, a long drawn out fight scene. Uh, we've seen a lot of you know Doc is an older guy. Uh, it would it would have obviously have a lot of pathos at this moment if he does if he does buy the farm. So you see him getting choked out. You see him like you know doing the the face a little bit. He sees the white light. That's the title of the episode, White Light. And you're like, oh man, like if the title of the episode is White Light. He's seeing the white light. No, not Doc. He was the funny one. And then he starts, like, he the, they do the out-of-body experience thing where he's floating up. And one of the most surreal things that I think I've seen in Z Nation, I've seen some really surreal things, but the thing where he's like, oh, there's a knife on the top of that shelf. Hey, man. And, like, calls down to his body there, like, there's a knife to, up here. And you could, okay. So if you want to be annoying and pedantic and not cool you could say well that knife was sticking out a little bit and he was able to see that and subconsciously make that happen but screw you out of body experiences are a thing in z nation now i'm i don't know if it's gonna play into the plot at all but that's a thing 
That is a thing that is happening, and you can't take that away from me. So Doc, like, you know, as he's sort of bleeding out or whatever, like, manages to hit the shelf, knock the knife down, and grab it and stab the guy. Uh, and he gets, you know, so he's spared. And you're like, huh. Fine, like, like you thought he was going to get it, and he, you know, he does not. He manages to make it, and that's big weight off of my shoulders. Um, what else do I have? Oh, okay, I, w- I did want to mention these flashbacks. That ev- not our flashbacks, flash forwards, flash something. Uh, because at one point, Addie's being chased, or something's happening to her, I forget exactly what, but she's in a moment of high intensity or whatever, and she has this vision, which very reminiscent of season one's, when her flashbacks were leading up to die zombie die again, uh, in her memories, she has this vision of, you know, a tricycle being ridden around. And of course it's got the sepia tone on the, on the outsides and it's blue. I, 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 for some reason I never realized this, but there's like no blue in Z nation. Nothing is blue. Everything is like, they just take that color. Cause if you look at the sky, it's always yellow, gray. Like the sky's never actually that color. Um, but so as Addie has that, that flashback, and I thought, oh, are we doing this again? And I don't, I, I shouldn't have doubted. I should have known enough to know that the Z Nation writers would be more inventive than that, and they wouldn't retread the same thing. But that was where my mind went initially. I was like, why is Addie having another vision? And then we're at with Citizen Z, and he doesn't really have a lot happen to him this episode. He just runs around up at Camp Northern Light, uh, you know looking for weapons. Uh, he finds some weapons. He's not very good at hunting the zombies, but fortunately they're not a ton of them. They're just fast. Uh, there's like two or three of them that are just running at him. Um, but he has a vision then too. And then I think, uh, Warren has, a, there's like four of them at least in this episode of these flashes to childhood. I, I mean, you could just say arguably, well, it's just all of them flashing back to their childhood and that's it. But this is writing, and this is television, and this is Z Nation. I th- these things aren't unconnected. I think that they are purposeful, and they mean something, and they're gonna come back. Uh, I may have to eat my words, but I don't. I don't think this is just random imagery. This is sort of like those uh, season two of Breaking Bad when they had all the black and white openings, and they're like, "What is this connected to?" And then, like, eventually, you found out at the end, like, "Oh, it's the thing with the plane." What? Um. I, in my mind, I'm kind of likening likening it to that, even though it's not exactly the same. But I really, really like that. Um, and then, and then we have that great scene with Murphy on the roof of the hotel, right? Like he's he's had it, and I think Murphy is a, a such an interesting character because, on the one hand, and as we mentioned last week, he's kind of a douchebag, but he he has a lot of depth beyond that. And I'm really glad they didn't stick with that. This episode with him just being all self-centered, although he is self-centered, but they, they looked at it in a different light where he's just like, I don't, I don't, this is not the life I want to live. I don't, he is Murphy is at his best when he's the reluctant savior. He's the one who has the cure. He's the one who can save the human race, but he doesn't want to. And we, we see that huge here. We see that big time with him on the top of this hotel. And he just says, and, and th- there's that great line where, you know, Garnett says, we have not come this far to just lose. And Murphy says, you know, legitimately to her, don't you get sick of saying that? Don't you get sick of talking about like how, you know, we haven't come. Yeah, do you say that every time? And she says, no, I don't get sick of it. Uh, which I thought was a lovely character moment for her. And then he jumps, and we have our second fake-out death of the episode. Which, I mean, I was like, I can't believe you're doing this. You can't kill Murphy! As much as I don't really like Murphy, like, it just doesn't make sense. How can you kill Murphy? But, okay, he jumped off. And then we see, this, like, the blood splatter and everything, and you're like, oh, no, Murph, come on. No, I guess they can do something with Cassandra. Maybe she's... Zombie swimming pool. Landed in the zombie swimming pool, cushioned by the bodies of the other zombies, and that's where the blood came from. Murphy can't even commit suicide right. (sighs) Like I said, fake out death number two. And then, we're done with the fake outs. 
because Mac ends up in a dark hallway, takes a wrong turn, and man, that scene was was tough because they they. I mean, we've seen this before, right? Like we saw this in season one when uh, Warren had to kill Garnett, and you know her, but but that was a little bit different. But here we have, you know. This moment where Maddie, Maddie, uh, Addie's on one side of the door and Mac's on the other side of the door. Mac is completely surrounded by zombies, like trying to fight him off, but there's no way he can't fight them off. And yet you hope because she's on the other side of the door, banging on the door, banging against the lock, shooting the lock, trying to get through. And he's screaming at her not to come through because he knows that he's going to get bit and he knows he's going to turn and he doesn't want her to see him. He doesn't want her to have to give him mercy. And then it happens. I mean, the, the, she breaks through and he's already been bit and she sees him like look into her eyes in his last moments as a thinking human being and then turn into a zombie. And to the show's credit, by the way, none of this blubbering, like, I can't do it. I mean, she like, she's Addie and she's awesome. And she puts him down. She's like, she knows what the reality is. She doesn't blubber about it in the moment. She does what has to be done. But it was such a powerful moment there. And and then, like, the fallout of that was just great to see. Because, you know, Murphy's already, like, he's like, screw it, I'm getting out of here. And she just busts through the window of the van that he's in, rips him out, and just starts, like, headbutts him, and then just starts beating his head into the ground. Until the other guys come up, and she's just like, this is all your fault, you giant douchebag you ran away and ah <sighs> cannot wait to see how that plays out further because again this is z nation and none of that stuff gets dropped everything gets carried through to its logical conclusion that's what i love about this show uh, we i guess to close i'll mention rocket guy and his bloody arm and i don't my wife was watching this and she turned to me and she's like what's up with that and i was like honestly not sure like I don't it doesn't make sense to me that he's been bitten because they made it like he was a very obviously prominent character in this episode carrying around a rocket launcher um you know very calm cool and collected in the face of all the screaming and you know everything else that was going on I I, we're gonna see him again I don't know what the blood on the sleeve is if he just got hurt or if he had somebody else's blood on him but that's an interesting character, and he's going to be coming back. Uh, I, I'm very confident in saying that. Um, so, yeah, that was this episode of Z Nation. That was my recap. Those are my thoughts. If you guys have any thoughts, please share them with me in the comments. I'd love to read them. Um, I'm going to be doing... I thought I was thinking, like, maybe I'm not going to keep doing this because... You know, not a ton of fans of Z Nation out there like there were for some of the other shows. Well, we should we recap, recap True Detective. Obviously, a lot of fans were True Detective. Um, and I'm doing this on my own. I thought maybe not, but I got to keep going after stuff like this, you guys. So next week, I'll be back. Tune in for that. Subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Like it if you like this videos. And I will see you next you. I will see you next week with more Z Nation recap. Bye.